This fly is called a bareback rider. Uh, I guided on the South Fork of the Snake for 30 years and came up with this fly. Uh, and when the golden stones are out, I really think they think it's real. They eat it like man. Okay, and if you notice that I'm tying this on a jig hook, and there was a book published, I don't know how many years ago, 40 years ago, by, by a, name, a guy named Datus Proper. And the title of the book is, What Does a Trout See? And I used to capture these golden stones and show kids, and I'd say, what do you see? they say, well, look at those legs. Okay, look how long that wing is in, flat, in, in back of its abdomen, behind its abdomen. And I believe that legs that are anatomically placed correctly on the fly make a difference. Now, Chernobyl ants with the legs fore and aft work. If you twitch them and, you know, we all know they work great. But on the south fork of the snake, that thing has more traffic than any other river in Idaho. It has fished thousands and thousands of rod days a year. So when these golden stones are out and the salmon flies are out like this guy, you know, if you have legs that are placed like legs, that look like a bug, I believe it makes a difference. So I'm going to put this J hook in here. I got to change my thread. So I need to make a thread base completely down the shank of this hook. friend of mine, this is one of his favorite flies, he now owns, he has his own TV show now, he's now globally famous, and his phrase was, tie on a bareback rider and let her buck, which I thought was kind of fun. So I use, you can use all kinds of dubbing. Doesn't really matter. I happen to like Ice Dub Golden Brown. That seems to be a pretty good dubbing for this. And I'm going to start in the rear, and then I'm going to go to the head and come back to the halfway point on this hook. So I'm resting my thread halfway. Now if you look at a golden stone, you will notice if you take a ruler out and look at it and measure it, you will find that the hind legs are closer to the end of the bug than they are to the head. This is why all these commercial flies I see bug, bug me. 
because their legs are so far crowded towards the head. But the legs, if you make, if you space them accurately, they look more like the insect. So what I do is I get three millimeter brown craft foam. And I will tie it on top, right in the middle of the hook. And I will just start working my way back. tie this off. Then I start halfway between this first section and the bend of the hook. <laughs> And then I'm going to tie this off one more time. So I'm going to cut my head kind of in a square shape because golden stoneflies have big heads. Now the other thing is that people don't always know, on the snake for instance, there are at least two broods of large gold, gold I mean two species of larger golden stones. The, there's a hatch that comes out a little bit after the salmon fly hatch in July. And the males are two thirds the length of the females. Uh, the, the stonefly that hatches the end of September is Clausenia sabulosa. The males do not fly. They're like a, they're like a squala. The males have, the term is brachypterous, but, but they never develop wings to fly. But the females do. And in both species, the males are always smaller than the female. So you can get away with a, a little bit smaller bug than most anglers fish and have greater success.
So I'm going to start again right at the halfway point. There's a product out there called Perfect Rubber. It's a Hedron product. And I believe it's, a, I think it's 100% silicone, although I'm not so sure. But what I like about it, instead of just plain old rubber legs off a strip that you peel off, I knot my legs and this, this particular material enables me to knot legs better than any other rubber I can find. So this is kind of a, a trick for me that I developed, I think. But I want to put a knot in them, so I'm going to go under and over. Under the rubber and over. And I'm just going to manipulate this to where these hind legs stick towards the rear. You see that? And you can kind of play with these to get just the right amount of angle. And then you can super glue them, the knots, and they won't ever go anywhere. my glue. I got it. So on this side, I go over and under. It's just the opposite. It's just bilateral symmetry, that's all I'm looking for. <laughs> What? Super glue doesn't hurt that stuff? That's the magic of perfect rubber. It doesn't hurt. Uh-uh. You know, you can take, uh, oh, what do they call it? Sexy floss, you know, and that stuff's, that stuff's cool to work with, but it, hardly any of the stuff you get is straight, okay? So you can put that on and tighten it in a way to where it's kind of perpendicular to your fly. And if you put a piece of, uh, if you put a little bit of flex cement on one side, if you put a little flex cement on this side, it'll bend it this way. Okay, but with perfect rubber it won't bend. I mean, it's cool stuff. So there you have your back legs.
This is Alaska brown bear. Okay, I used to, in my early career, I used to get uh, Alaska brown bear from a taxidermist in Boise, and then he quit doing bears, and then I had to find a source. So I called, a, in the days when you could go to the library and look at actual, a book of yellow pages, you know, I look, I look in the yellow pages in, in the Anchorage area and just cold called taxidermists. And he said, no, we can't send you any bear parts because it's illegal. You can't buy, you cannot buy or sell bear hair, bear parts in Alaska. He said, but if you want to go to the fur rendezvous in February, you can buy them green and I'll tan them for you. So I go, huh, well, okay. So I got somebody to back me and I flew up to Anchorage and I went to the Fur Rendezvous and they had, I don't know, like 75 green bear hides lying all over the snow. And, you know, people were wearing coonskin caps and mucklucks and it was weird. But I bought five bear hides and I had them tanned and uh, I sold most of it. I learned a good lesson because hardly any of it was as good as this. And it needs, it's really super, super coarse, super dense, and super kinky. And it makes a, if you hold this, in, if you backlight this stuff, it is so much like a natural stonefly wing when it's fluttering. It, deer hair is nothing like it. Synthetics don't float like it. This stuff is magic. The thing is about this stuff is that you have to clip it at the hide and it works absolutely opposite of deer hair. You can't stack this stuff and so you have to take all these little guard, these long guard hairs out. Then you take a little comb and you comb out all the fluff. Kinky. So since bear hair isn't hollow, it's imperative that you super glue it to your thread or it will pull right out. It's slick. So I gotta put a little glue on here. Now that won't ever come out. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take two more pieces of perfect rubber that will form both legs. The middle leg and the front leg. Most fly shops carry perfect rubber, but not, I mean, not all of them.
Kind of a lot of trouble for a fly, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna knot these guys, and I'm gonna make both of these legs angled forward. They're gonna they're gonna bend forward. See, I can kind of manipulate them, you know, to get to get the leg to be a right angle. I mean, at the right position. So you see, this one's just a little bit too far up. I can do that. Look, it's right in the right position. I can super glue it, and it stays put. It is. That's a bareback rider right there.